my brother Omar Wale. Um, yeah, so I, I like you know, America is your country, bro. Yeah, and you have to understand that America is your country. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, actually, as Sister Yvette says, yeah, at 10 minutes and two seconds into Pan Africanism is dead. She says, uh, we have this this kind of relationship with America that causes some people to say, well, I don't have a country. No, you have a country, brother Omowale. There's a difference between saying, I don't have a country and my country isn't doing right by me. We have a country that is abdicating its responsibility to us, but it's still our country. So America is your country, my brother. Yeah. Why are you rejecting your Americanness for this utopian ideal of Africanness, bro? What's that about? Yeah, so <clears throat> what I'll say is this, um, and this specifically just relates to Black America, um, and, and you know it, it may it may relate to other uh, you know groups within the African diaspora, um, but as of the late twentieth century, um, we saw a lot of movements. I like to refer to them as uh, lost tribe identitarian movements uh, in the diaspora, um, where people have this concept that we as Black people in America are unique people that are cut off uh, from everyone else. And then having that uniqueness, having that history erased, um, you know, some of our people ha have had great imaginations in terms of giving themselves a history that gives them uh, uh, credence um, to their, uh, that gives credence to their desire to be American. So whether, you know, you adopt an ideology or an identity of being uh, a Hebrew, or you are a Moor, or you are an Aboriginal, or you're an American, right? Like, these are all things that we did to give ourselves, um, to attach ourselves truly um, uh, to the power, right? Because when you look at it, you know, coming into the 20th century, uh, America emerges on the world stage as an empire, right? So, so Black people in America, you know, we have never truly been uh, citizens of this of this country. I, I think the best way to characterize us as a group um, has been in as an uh, in inter internal colony. Um, one of the one of the analogies that I used recently on Facebook is that we are merely uh, a flea on the back of an elephant, um, but we we posture towards other um, people in the diaspora and and, to, and and towards the continent as if we ourselves. Um, are the actual um, elephant, you know? So there's a um, a, a, a lot of bravado um, in our in our language at times, and, and for me, whenever I see that, um, it's indicative of ignorance because what it points out to me is that your bravado is really being uh, 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 subsidized uh, by the strength of the empire. You know, you can you you can you can bark very loud when you have access, or when you feel as though you have access to 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 uh, uh, America. You have access to the American uh, uh, dollar, um, and oftentimes I don't think that our people understand. Um, like you can you can you can conceptually understand what it means to be a slave, but that doesn't mean that you have an understanding of the plantation economy or the global system that upholds such an economy, right? So you know sometimes I try to to put things on a macro level. Um, when explaining, uh, you know, the plantation to people, right? I explain it on a global level and I say, well, listen, the West, right, the belly of the beast, it represents the house. Mm -hmm. So you are saying to these Africans or, or to our brothers and sisters that are coming here, you are saying y'all are coming here and taking our resources. Mm -hmm. But first of all, whenever you say our resources, you sound like the slave who say, master, we sick. Right, because the, 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 the way the way that this American pie works, mm -hmm. yes, the pie is manufactured here in America, mm -hmm. but the ingredients come from comes from being extracted from our brothers and sisters all across the global south. Yes. And the way that colonization has worked is when when the Europeans go to the west coast of Africa to colonize our, our brothers and sisters there, what they do is I take your land. Now that I've taken your land, your means of survival, in order for you to get access to survival, you have to have money to come into my economy. In order for you to get money to come into my economy, you have to get a job working uh, within the same colonial apparatus that is stealing 
your resources. The problem becomes with that as the as as the Europeans go go back west, as the jobs go farther and farther away, Africans have to traverse oceans now to get to the resources in order to survive, right? In order to access their resources, now they have to come to the Americas. Now they have to cross the Mediterranean and go to Europe, right? Because their resources are in these places. So this is the only way that they can access them. So I think that that's why we, um, as Africans in America, we can't take this posture like, hold on, hold on, y'all stay away. You know, y'all stay on the field and we're going to be in the house and eat good off of these scraps that are coming off the table. And then we get frustrated, like, hold on. Y'all taking all scraps now, you know what I mean? So I think that that is a, a slave mentality. And unfortunately, too many of our people um, ha have it, you know, here uh, in, in, in America. Brother, brother, brother Tahaka. Yeah, yeah. The, the interesting thing here is that coming from what um, Brother Omowali has just said, um, we, we, we're kind of very literally in that place whereby we live in a country where we can literally see <laughs> the stolen wealth of, um, of the African continent, yeah? yeah. Um, uh, you know, from the so-called crown jewels um, mm -hmm. to the city of London, Mm -hmm. um, like literally, like they they mm -hmm. they parade the riches and the wealth that they stole from the Brit to the British Museum. You go to the British Museum and you see the yep. stolen artifacts from our continent, yeah. On Definitely. Display. And they're telling people about how so and so gave it to them as a gift and all kind of shipping this. Um, <laughs> you know, so so like I mean, it's why is it like because obviously we live in a country where there, there has been tension sometimes. Uh, between Africans and Caribbeans, Africans versus Caribbeans um, mm -hmm. in this country. Why is it um, important that we adopt an African identity uh, for as Africans living in Britain? Yeah, I, I think um, I think a lot of people. I think why is it important? Okay, just answer your question first and foremost. Why is it important? Is I think because it's. Uh, I think for me personally, it's a matter of fact. You have European people, you have Asian people, and you have African people. I mean, there's, I mean, that's just me being crass to break it down. But those are the groups, yeah. So African peoples um, are peoples of African descent. So when you go to America, even for example, right, yeah. and you get a lot of these um, people who call themselves Americans. You know, I'm American. Those types of Americans, right? A lot of them will will, will acknowledge that they're Irish or, or that they're Anglo-American or that there's some other type of American somewhere along the line. They won't just say that they're American, mm -hmm. American. Or, but I mean, they will say they're American, American majority of the time. Mm -hmm. But within that, they understand where they come from and where their roots are and where, you know, they talk about the West and America isn't really that close to Western Europe. But America, Australia, all these countries are part of West because they recognize their link to a particular um, um, geographic area, but also the political ideologies that developed as a result of that, mm. um, the, the happenings in that geographic area. Mm -hmm. So, if the rest of the world are defining their politics like that, and this is how the world system is saying it is working, and like everybody else on the panel has said, it's about understanding, understand that world system and why we adopt the African um, ideas. I think it's a very important that we understand. Well, I think what's happened here with the ADOS movement is that we don't really realize, or we don't appreciate that we actually do stand on the shoulders of giants, that a lot of these conversations and these debates that we're having, it comes from an arrogance that sometimes that we have in our community where it's just history started from the moment we began reading books or when we got woke. And now all of a sudden, I need to now come and introduce a de this debate when really what I could do is go and read something that happened in the 80s, 70s and the 60s and see exactly how Pan-Africanism came to be and why it was that African-Americans, African-Caribbean people and um, yeah, all kinds of people from across the world embrace this idea of black nationalism mm -hmm. at, on a transnational level mm -hmm. seeing that we understood Africa was a continent you're not telling us anything new by telling us that Africa is a continent we understood that and we understood that di the diversity of Africa was a massive part of what Pan-Africanism is about because we're oh, saying yeah, yeah, yeah. there's different types of Africans and now we have even more different types because now you have Jamaican Africans and you've got African Americans mm -hmm. and we're all part of this one African family mm -hmm. so yeah I, I really think it's just about a lot of ADS people just going back and doing just a little bit more research in, yeah. into into that, that idea. But yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm gonna just, just say, and with, without any snobbery whatsoever, yeah, um, that if you're somebody who's a proponent of ADOS, please, yeah, please um, do some significant research on Pan-Africanism. What has been absolutely clear 
Um, and this, the reason why we're doing this is not for the sake of condescension, um, but for the sake of information and education, that there is a lack of knowledge yeah, about Pan-Africanism, what it is, its history, and what it's designed to achieve. You know what I'm saying? But right, just, just to extemporize on this last question slightly, um, there was a time, as I said um, recently on Twitter, there was a time when there was no identity known as American. There was a time uh, when there was no identity known as German and Italian. In fact, those two, those last two are just over 100 years old. It was the late 1800s yeah, when the identity of German um, and American even came about because these people conglomerate unified groups of people um, and invested time and energy and passion into this identity. And now these identities are normal uh, in today's world. So, it, you know, really the idea that there is no such thing as African reflects just a lack of imagination uh, and conviction on our part. We can create ourselves uh, into who it is that we want to be. You know what I'm saying? There's, there was no identity uh, until just over, uh, what, 60, 60, 70 years ago called Israeli. Yeah, the, the Israel did not exist. Yeah, but there were some people uh, that referred to themselves as Jews who demanded a homeland and their European brothers and sisters got together in and insured and commandeered some land for them. Yeah, and put them there and defined this, this place as Israel. And now there's mm. something in the world called Israeli. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And th that didn't exist 70 odd years ago. It never existed. Yeah, so, you know, if, if, if Israel can exist, <laughs> why can't Africa exist? You know what I mean? Uh -huh.